Bismillah. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa ala rasulillah. Again, this week we're going through the book Al-Adab Al-Mufra, a code for everyday living, the examples of the early Muslims by Imam Bukhari. Today's chapter is chapter 222, Maintaining Property. And hadith number is 478. Instead of maintaining property. Yeah, making money. By the way, there's a, and, uh, a feedback. So uh, maybe uh, the brother will just put a volume down or feedback. You're going to give me all the yours. If you go away from me. <laughs> <laughs> the problem we have ecosystem now, so oh, right. I'm just quite close to. If you switch off that. Can we just 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 a change? There's no switch off for this. No, no, that one doesn't. It's really loud. It's very loud. A bit further. No, it's not to do with it. It is an like a you know sound. Ecosystem. Like, yes. It goes vroom on the head, man. I will switch up like out. Okay, I'm gonna set the volume. Let me just uh, try this thing. Pull the table. There's nothing open. Microphones there. There's no microphones open there. There's only a third microphone open. Oh, we have only one switch. You understand? Is there any more than these two microphones? Yes, this one. That's what, see, that's why it's working. Take it off. Let me show you. Let me show you. Give me that microphone. Let me show you. Bismillah. Much better. Much better. Zakallah khair, Shaykh. Now it's best better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Any sugar? No sugar? I didn't put any because it's uh, herbal tea. Okay. Come on. Three sugar, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, brothers, can you just come forward, please, and make sure that there is no gaps? Jazakumullah khair. My class, it's very important to adhere to the sunnah. Allah, barakah, inshallah. Very important. Jazakumullah. The chapter <coughs> is making money. And I'm sure that everybody was interested now to know about this chapter. <laughs> making money. Um, this chapter, Imam al-Bukhari brought it for very important reason. That is, the reason is that some people think that if a person goes religious, he should not make money. To the extreme that some of those people would sit down and expect people to give them. Or they would sit down and make dua to Allah and you think that the roof will split open and pounds will come into your pocket. It does not work like that. The person, he needs to make a proper tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make his effort to make money. And when the Prophet ﷺ says, إِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ وَإِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَحِ If you are in the morning, you woke up, don't, don't await, and don't wait for the evening. That means you're going to die. And if you are alive in the evening, don't wait until the morning. It doesn't mean that you give up everything. You don't make money. No, it doesn't mean that. And really, it doesn't mean as well that if you are rich, you are not Zahid, ascetic. Who says so? If man was rich, radiallahu anhu, and he was Zahid. Amr ibn As, he was rich. Amr ibn As, radiallahu anhu, he had an orchard which had alfu alfi khashaba. Alfu alf means one million. One million, listen to me, one million grape trees. 
ألف ألف خشبة. Each خشبة, each wooden stick, he brought it for one dirham. So how much he paid? One million dirham. He was rich, but he was what? Ascetic, zahid. So if you are making money, it doesn't mean that you are not zahid. Person could have a lot of money, yet you could see him, mashallah. He's down to earth. He's running a normal car. Of course he would not go to old bangers, because that's stinginess as well. It's a normal car. Uh, they get it from A to B, maybe brand new, but you will not think that he is really rich. So a person should always, as well, show the, the trace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's na'ma upon him, but at the same time, ascetic, that he's not really preoccupied by the dunya. So here, this chapter, it means you make the money, but at the same time, it will not be on the expense of the hereafter. It will not be on the expense of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Abdullah ibn Amr, the son of that rich man, he saw a person who is uh, his nephew, he said to him, does your workers work? He said, I don't know. He said, if you are from Bani Faqif, you would have known. For verily the person, if he works with his workers, then he is from the workers of Allah. We have explained this hadith before. So here he said that if you, if you are, even you're rich, you work with your workers, then you are from the workers of whom? Allah. So making the money is, is important. Then the hadith 478. Go ahead. Hadith 478. Al-Harith bin Laqih al-Nafi'i said, one of our men used to slaughter colts, which Father told me is uncastrated male horses under four years. Um, he would say, shall I live long enough to ride this horse? Then we received Omar's letter telling us, maintain what Allah has provided for you and make it prosper, for there is yet time in the affair. What do you call the small horse, isn't it? Colt. Yes. So what, why, why is it, uh, not pony, colt, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm just saying, why is it that he said castrated and castrated? Uh, the brother looked in the dictionary of Ahmed, and he got the definition was I'm castrated. Yeah, I, I don't want you to add things from other people. Okay. <laughs> Please read from that English translation because it can confuse everybody. Okay, the one who's going to be added is only me. <laughs> so when you said I'm castrated, I never heard this before. That's not right, by the way, I'm castrated. So take it away. So, <clears throat> the man, one of us, that means from the followers or from the companions, at the time of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, he used to, as soon as his horse produced a colt, which is a small one, straight away he will slaughter it. Why? Because he says, I'm not going to live to ride this. When it gets old, I'm already dead. Straight away, Umar al-Khattab, he sent them a letter to those people who were doing this. Kitab, scroll. And aslihu ma razaqakumullah. Fix what Allah has provided you. That means work on it. Invest it. Make it to expand. فَإِنَّ فِي الْأَمْرِ تَنَفُسَ For verily, still there is a breath into the matter. That means it's not doomed. It's not, you should not be in despair. So Allah, it doesn't mean that you, if you are, uh, for example, not going to live for a long time. You don't do anything. For verily, what you're doing could be for the ones who are what? After you. For whatever you are doing, if you're not really yourself, not going to use that horse, your children will use that horse. The Muslims later on will use that horse. So don't be in sort of like depression so much that you don't think about the life whatsoever. So don't go on the extreme on the other. So some people on the extreme of that dunya is their jannah, their abode. And that's why they do everything to make their dunya look like Jannah. That's extreme. And that extreme, they're divorcing the dunya so much they don't do anything. That's not an extreme as well. So that's not really right as well. So the person, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also said to us in the Quran, وَلَا تَنْسَى نَصِيبَكَ مِنَ الدُّنْيَا Don't forget your portion from the dunya. You have to have your portion from the dunya, no problem. So being a person who is rich, no problem. Prophet ﷺ, he said, لا حسد إلا فتنتين. There is no envy except for the two. Two things that is envy. You know, envy, a word means that you wish to possess what is with the people, isn't it? As a dictionary. But it's always used for the negative. Envy. But actually, could you use it as well for the positive? That is, if you are wishing something in the hands of somebody, as long as you're not wishing that thing to be deprived from him and being taken to you, that's the envy which is haram. 
That's the envy which Allah said, وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَسَدٍ إِذَا حَسَدٍ The envy that is to say that, oh, he's got a nice car. I wish that car, he is going to lose it and it come to me. I wish that Allah will take that car from him and give it to me. Because he had now suq dhan in Allah Azza wa Jal, bad opinion about Allah, that Allah should not give that car to that man. He should give it to you. Look at that. So that is the envy which is not good. But the envy which is the one that you are trying to be the same thing as a person and you are happy for him, just like Allah granted him, grant me as well. There is two envy which is the Prophet of Allah, he encouraged it. One, he says, قَالْ رَجُلٌ آتَاهُ اللَّهُ مَالًا فَصَلَّتَهُ عَلَى هَلَكَتِهِ بِالْحَقِّ A man whom Allah had given him money, mashallah, a lot of money. Yet, Allah made him to burn this money, to use this money, to get rid of this money in the what? In the haqq. In the way which is good to build masjids, to build orphanages, to build. So you are saying, oh Lord, if I got the same money, I would do the same thing. You will have the same reward. And a man whom Allah has given him the Quran, so he recited during the day and during the night, and you say, oh, I wish to do the same thing. Allah will give you the same reward because maybe you are not able, because maybe you are a person who is not an Arab, and you need a lot of time to uh, read the Arabic, but you want to be like that person who recites the Quran day and night. So here, it means that the person, if he is doing the money for the sake of that, he's not preoccupying himself from the hereafter, no problem. And it's not against the ascetism. It is not against the zuhd. Right, now we're coming to 479. 479. Anas bin Malik said, the Prophet wasallam said, if the signs of the hour appear and one of you has a palm cutting in his hands and it is possible to plant it before the hour, before the hour comes, he should plant it. Right. Another hadith which is clear cut. In Qamat al Sa'a, that means if the hour is about to take place. Let's say, for example, now you heard, okay, that there is like the sound of the trumpet. The hour is going to, and the earth is shaking. And you've got in your hand fasila. Fasila means a small palm tree. Is what it says? Palm cutting. Palm, palm? palm cutting. No, it's a fasila means little palm tree. Pa- little palm tree, either it will be with her mother or separate. That's the fasila. So that little one, so if you've got it in your hand, so he said, if you are able to plant that, please, if, you, if it's my translation different from that one, point that out. If, that, if you are able to plant that in the, that little short time before the day of Rashid takes place, then let you do so. So don't be bothered. Put it. And of course, you don't want to be alive when the day of resurrection takes place because you're going to be from the what? The evil ones. But this is an example of exaggeration. That even if you're the last moment of your life, which is the day of resurrection is going to take place, and you've got in your hand something to plant, then plant it. You know for a fact you're not going to get used to, you're not going to get benefit from that plant, are you? Because you're going to die. But here it shows you that how beneficial, how beneficial is that little tree. Even if that day of resurrection is going to take place, nobody's going to use it. Yet on the day of resurrection is going to give you a lot of rewards. That's what it means. And here this is, I would say, it is an exaggeration in prompting the person to plant the tree. And planting the tree is very good. As long as it does not be occupied from the hereafter. Prophet of Allah, he said, إِذَا تَبَيَعْتُمْ بِالْعِينَ وَخَدْتُمْ أَذْنَابَ الْبَقَرَ وَرَضِتُمْ بِالزَّرَعْ سَلَّطَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمْ دُلَّا لَا يَنْزِعُ عَنْكُمْ حَتَّى تَرْجِعُ إِلَى دِينِكُمْ That if you have trade in Ina, riba, and then held the tails of the cows, and also abandon, and, and you preoccupy yourself with agriculture, these two, holding the tail of the cow, that means, you know, the plowing, tools, you plow the land, and you are all the time planting, and you always preoccupy yourself with time, and you abandon the jihad, Allah will impose upon you humiliation which will not be lifted until you go back to your religion. Now that plantation which is condemned in this hadith, it is plantation that takes you away from the remembrance of Allah. 
Whereas the Prophet of Allah always encouraged us to plant the land and plow the land. This is a land that if you plant it, it will bring you what? Goods. It will bring you crops. For verily, it will not make you dependent upon people who are maybe going to be your enemies later on. You will be self dependent, independent. So, in this hadith, tells us the importance of the plantation, tells us the importance of as well not to give up, even though that the time is short. We have Ibn Jarir Tabari, he had narrated with authentic chain that Umar ibn Khuzayma ibn Thabit, Umar is a follower, Khuzayma ibn Thabit is a great companion. He was an old man at the time of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu So Umar ibn Khattab, he saw Khuzayma ibn Thabit and he said to him, what prevents you <coughs> To plow your land and put and plant it. Plow your land and plant it. He says, I am an old man. I'm about to die. Tomorrow I'm going to die. Very soon. So Amr Khattab said, I prompt you. I, I, I insist upon you that you should plant it. And Umar, he said, his son, I have seen Umar, the Khalifa, planting the land along with my father. <coughs> so here, that's how Umar al-Khattab was keen, you remember, to send that letter. Why do you slaughter that little cult of yours? Why do you slaughter it? There is, you know, this, the, the, in the matter, there is something there. Don't give up. And the Prophet is not saying to you don't to give up the whole dunya. No, it is not, doesn't mean that. So this also, this hadith, encourage us to do the ta'a, the obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even in the last moments. In this occasion, we could mention the one who killed the 99 people. Killed 99 yet, he's still searching for the what? The repentance. When he was told about the monk, he went to the monk and he's in ignorant. I killed 99 and I want to repent. Is there a way for me to repent? No way. Killed 99, repentance is closed in front of you. So he killed him. He made it 100. But still the man is searching for what? For the tawbah. So he was told to go to a scholar. The scholar said to him, yes, but you need to travel from this land because the inhabitants of this land is no good. Go to a good land. So even you are, if you have a scholar in a land, but the land is no good, you're going to be affected by the environment. <coughs> so the scholar told him to leave that land. You're going to be affected by the environment. So he left the land in the last moment of his life. While he left, he died. So we have the angels who are in charge for the person to be taken to the hell farm. And the angels were in charge to take the person to the paradise. They had a dispute. He is no, he, he killed a hundred people. Hell farm. No, no, no. He want to repent to Allah. He's in Jannah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked, he sent an angel to arbitrate between them in the image of a human being. And that angel, he said, in the image of a human being, that we will measure between the two lands. If he's closer to the land that he's going to go to, that is, he will be to Jannah. If he's closer to the land that he left, which is the bad land, he will be from the people of Alpha. Allah Azza wa Jal, he had commanded the land which is the one that he's going to go to, the good land, to come closer to where he died. And he commanded the land where he left, which is the bad land, to go away. So when they measured, they found him closer to the land where he's supposed to go. So the angels were in charge to take him to paradise. He said, he is from us. He belongs to us. They took him and put him in Jannah. So it is, this is to show you that the person in his last moments should be eager to what? To do the good. To the last moment of his. Now, I've been searching into maybe more than 20,000 books for a, a story which I read a long time ago. And alhamdulillah, you're fortunate because I found it. So it's to show you that how the person should be keen to do as much as he can and not to give up. This is a story which is mentioned in Fayd al-Qadir. Fayd al-Qadir is an explanation or interpretation of Sharh al-Jam al -Sair. It says that Kisra, you know the king of Persia. Kisra, Khusrus. He said one day he went to hunt. He passed by an old man. This is the scene. Old man. And he was planting olive trees trees. So he said to him, you old man, you know that the 
olive tree, it will not give olives except after three years. So why are you planting it? I mean, you're not going to live for that long. You're too old for that. So he said, O oh king, people before us, they have planted for us and we have eaten. So we are planting for the ones who come after us. So they will eat. Kisra, he said, Zeh. Zeh means 1,000 dinars. So the person who's in charge, when he listened to Kisra, straight away he given what? 1,000 dinar to that old man. Then the old man, he looked, he said, Oh, king, this, by the way, olive tree, it does not actually give the true fruit into 30 years, but actually this fruit, this olive, will give straight away. Kisra, he said, Zih, another 1,000 dinar. The old man, he said, Oh, king, you know, this olive tree, it does not just give one time during a year, twice. He said, Zih. 1,000 dinar, and he said to the one who's a treasurer, let's go away, this man is going to finish us off. <laughs> I just show you that old man, he is planting olive tree. I know the olive tree because I come from the land, which is Bilad Sham, is olive tree land. And an olive tree, you need a lot of time for it. You need patient. So this man is planting, even though maybe he will not eat from the fruit of that olive, but it will be for the people who are after him, the sons and the children and all of that. Grandchildren will eat from it. And although their time will remember, I'll tell you. Well, if you know about the Palestinians, they treat the olive tree, they treat the olive trees like their children. So when the Jews, they take the olive trees off, you know the Jews are there in Israel. Uh, what they do, they confiscate the land and they build their, you know, buildings which are not supposed to be built. You know, the mustawtanat, what is the word for that? Settlements, settlements that's right, the settlements. They're not supposed to do that. So they build these settlements in those areas by plucking out the tree. And the old man, he said, this tree is more dear to me than my own son. He looked after it for more than 30 or 40 years. So they come to plant it. It's, it's just planting. It's, it, they, when they uh, uproot it, they are like uprooting his heart. So I'm just saying that the person should always, never ever give up to the last moment of his. Prophet of Allah said, if the hour is about to take place, then you have a small little tree. So this is the palm tree here. And if you are able to do it, just to put it there before you die, before the day of resurrection takes place, then let you put it and plant it. Now we're coming to Hadith 480, which is unauthentic. So we go to 223, the chapter Da'watul Madlum. Chapter 223. The supplication of one wrong. Hadith 481. Abu Huraira said, The Prophet وسلم, said, There are three supplications that are answered. The supplication of the person who is wronged, the supplication of the traveler, and the supplication of a parent against his child. The chapter title is The Supplication of One Wrong. Okay, the oppressed. The one is wrong, correct, but the oppressed maybe is better. Madhloom. This hadith is a repetition of hadith number 32. And we discussed hadith number 32 more than a year ago. <laughs> so we will inshallah repeat, but also with extra. Hadith 32 in your book, it says three supplications which will be fulfilled. La shakka fihin, no doubt about them. As an addition which is not here. La shakka fihin. That will be fulfilled. There's no doubt about them. He started with the one, because of it, the chapter title. That is the supplication of the oppressed. Da'watul madloom. So three supplication will be fulfilled. First one, the supplication of a person who is under oppression. Oppression in all types in all colors, is haram. For very, you're going to have a hadith later on, which is the hadith, if you go to hadith 490, you will find there a hadith, which is a great hadith of Abu Dhar al-Ghifari. 
which is a hadith Qudsi, talks about Allah the Almighty. He says, Oh my slaves, for verily I made zulm, oppression, haram upon myself, and I made it haram between you, so do not oppress one another. This hadith, as I said, is a mighty hadith. This is hadith which the narrators are from Bilad al-Sham. Ashrafu hadith, the most noble hadith for Bilad al-Sham. And Abu Idris al-Khawlani, he used to narrate that this hadith from Abu Dhar, and every time he narrates it, he kneels on his knees. Why? Because of the power of this hadith. It's a long hadith, by the way. We're going to come to it, inshallah, and explain it to you. So this hadith is, as I said, hadith Qudsi, and it's from the principles of the religion. The scholars had explained hadith 490 in books, volumes. Right. The volume, of course, is of degrees. The highest of is what? Shirk. That is to make dhulm unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the highest dhulm. And you know that all the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to dhulm and justice. Meaning, if you fulfill the commands of Allah, then you are doing just. If you have not fulfilled the commands of Allah, you've done what? Dhulm, injustice. If you have embarked upon shirk, you've done injustice. If you keep away from the shirk, you've done justice. So all, everything that you do is for the dhulm. And one of those dhulm, that is this hadith is talking about, to make dhulm upon other people. And the ahadith, well let's start with the ayah in the Quran, in Surah Ibrahim. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمِ don't you ever think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oblivious, not aware of what the zalimun do. For verily he will give them a respite until the day when the eyes will stare out of fear. And that is the day of resurrection. مُغْطِعِينَ مُقْنِعِي رُؤُسِهِمْ لَا يَرْتَدُّ إِلَيْهِمْ طَرْفُهُمْ وَأَفِيدَتُهُمْ How are to the end of the verses? As for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, In Allah, la yumli li zhalim. Allah said, we'll give him time for that zhalim. We'll give him more time. Hatta idha akhadahu lam yuflit. But when Allah punishes him, he will not let go of him. Continuous punishment. Then he recited, Wa kathalika akhdu rabbika idha akhadha al-qura, wa hiya zhalimah. Inna akhadahu alimu al-shaleem. In Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says that this is the way when Allah azza wa jal punishes the village inhabitants. And because of their zulm, and verily, His punishment is severe. Now, Prophet of Allah, He said, اتقوا دعوة المظلوم Fear the supplication of the mazloom. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ There is no barrier between it, that is the supplication of the one who has been wronged, the one who has been oppressed, and between Allah. There is no barrier. فَإِنَّهُ لَيْسَ بَيْنَهَا وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ حِجَابٍ تُرْفَعُ فَوْقَ الْغَمَامٍ It will be lifted, that supplication, on top of the clouds. Who lifted it up? Allah the Almighty. Then Allah will speak to that supplication. He will address that supplication. وَعِزَّتِي وَجَلَالِي لِأَنصُرَنَّكِ وَلَوْ بَعْدَ حِينَ Verily, I will give you the response even after time. So even that the zalim will not get the punishment straight away, but he will get it eventually. When the person, he is mazloom, and he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get revenge from the person who had wronged him, there are three things will take, one of them will take place. Either, which is the most likely, that the supplication will get the zalim straight away. Or it will be delayed to a certain time. Or it will be saved for the one who's been wronged on the day of resurrection. You will take it. On the day of resurrection, you will take it from that person who wronged you. In the hadith, which will be coming to us as well, hadith 500. And I can't remember the hadith now, but it's going to be coming later on, inshallah. This hadith, 
which is Hadith Abdullah ibn Unais. He says that the Prophet ﷺ said, يُحْشَرُ nas The people will be gathered on the day of resurrection. قَالْ حُفَاتًا عُرَاتًا غُرْلًا بُهْمًا They will be naked and also they will be uh, uh, with their circumcised part as well. بُهْمًا بُهْمًا Messenger of Allah, what is what is Buhmahin? So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that they will have nothing with them. Nothing with them. Let me just put that hadith so I can tell you which, which number it is here. Right? Let me just give you that hadith, which number it is, so you could really refer to it. This hadith is number 533. No, sorry, sorry. No, 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 it's not 503. It's 970. Not 570. 970. This hadith, which it says that Abdullah ibn Unais, radiallahu an, and this hadith is in the chapter Bab al Mu'anaqa, hugging and embracing. Yahshurullah al Ibada awi nas, uraq, naked, ghurla, buhma. Qulna ma buhma. What is buhma, Messenger of Allah? He said, Laysa ma'ahum shay. There's nothing with them, no property, no money, no nothing. The caller will call them. With a voice that everybody will be able to hear it. The one who is far and the one who is near will hear it the same way. That is Anal Malik. Allah saying, I am the king. And then he starts saying, The ones from the people of Jannah will not enter Jannah and there is someone from the people of Hellfire still is being wronged by him. Do you understand that? You can't enter Jannah and already somebody has been destined to the Hellfire, you have wronged him, you cannot enter the Jannah until what? You're being cleansed, you're being justified. And nobody will enter the Hellfire and there is someone from the people of Jannah is being wronged by him, he has to take his justice. And now you understand what is Buhma. You got nothing. So this person who is going to the hellfire, you have wronged him. You were unjust to him. You were a bad person to him. Now he is, could be kafir. And that's the hadith of the Prophet of Allah. Ittaqu da'wat al-mazloom wa in kana kafira. Fear the supplication of the one who is under oppression, even if he's a disbeliever. If this believer has been wronged him, he calls upon Allah. He calls upon whatever it is. Maybe he doesn't believe in anything. He just says, you know, I want revenge. Just like that. That person who is a disbeliever, kafir, Allah will fulfill his supplication. Allah will respond to his wish. So this person is going to the hellfire forever. And yet because you wronged him, Allah he says, no, you can't go to Jannah. You have to cleanse yourself. So this person, you could negotiate with him. What do you want with Mahasanat, man? You're going to the hellfire forever. What are you going to do with it? Just go to the hell. Don't ask me. No, no, no. I want some of your Hasanat. Why? Because I want to reduce the heat of my fire. So in the fire as well, there's a bottom, there's a bottom for the bottom, there's a bottom for the bottom. There's heat. So this person, instead of being in the bottom, it would be what? A bit up. No, no. Give me Hasanat. Even he will not accept their hamdinah. You haven't got anything with you. Nothing. You have no cars, no houses to offer. Same thing with the person who is the one who is in the, in the hellfire. And he had drunk somebody from the people of paradise. You can't go to the hellfire yet until that person is in paradise take justice from you. So the person in the hellfire might negotiate with the person in the... You know, I'm going to the hellfire. What do you mean? More fire to me? No, no, I want my hasanat for you. You haven't got hasanat, I'll drop you more sayyat on top of you. So he would go more into the level of hellfire, and the person paradise would be what? Elevated in paradise. And that's the qantara. What's the qantara? The qantara, the edge of the bridge. You know there's a bridge? Between us and paradise is a bridge. And there is at the end of that bridge, this qantara. Qantara is for the sake of justifications. We have to make sure that there is nobody is asking anybody else for justice. 
حتى الشاة الجلحاء تقتص من الشاة القرناء that the one which is the sheep that's got no horn will take justice from the sheep which got horns he will tell her why did you knock me down he will take justice even sheep that is to show you the extreme of justice that Allah Azza wa Jal will not let anybody to enter by the paradise of hellfire until justice is there so I'll tell the person who is doing something wrong to somebody now before the end of the class get up and just go and ask for repentance not from Allah Azza wa Jal only no 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 you have to ask for that person please forgive me brother because if that person made a supplication to you and you took his money let's say you're going to spend more money than that you took just to fix yourself. You don't know, God knows how many diseases are going to give you, Allah Azza wa Jal. How many diseases? You don't know. Da'watul Madloom, it will strike you. One of the companions that we know about is Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas, radiyallahu anhu. Whom the Prophet of Allah, he said, Allahumma stajib li Sa'd. Oh Lord, fulfill the supplication of Sa'd. Sa'd. If he is supplicating without zulm, without oppression, his supplication will be what? Fulfilled. So how about if he's been oppressed? That's double, huh? Double response. So Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an. He was appointed by Umar al-Khattab radiallahu an to be on the masjids there in the area of, uh, of Bilad al-Sham. He was there and leading the people. One person, some people, they said, this man is no good to pray for us. Because of that rumor, Umar al-Khattab, he took him away from there and he appointed Ammar ibn Yasir to lead the prayers. Then he came to and asked him, Abu Ishaq, that's the kunya of Sa'ad al -Nukas. We've heard that you don't pray the proper prayer. He said, oh, you know the believers, I lead them with the prayer of the Prophet of Allah. I prolong the first rak'ah more than the second rak'ah. He said, this is what we know about you, Abu Ishaq. But let me send somebody with you to go and ask in these masajid who had made these alleged complaints. So somebody gone with him. And they started asking in the masajid, one after the other, what do you have against this Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas? Everyone said, okay, except for one person called Abu Sa'dah. Abu Sa'dah. Oh, we've asked us, we'll tell you. This person, he does not lead us in the army. That means he's a coward. And he, when you have a war booty, he does not divide the war booty in justice. He means he gives something to his maybe relatives. And ولا يعدل في القضية, and he's not just as well when he makes judgment between two people. When he said those three lies, he said, "Verily, I'm going to supplicate with three <coughs> against those three lies." By our Lord, if this person is a liar. And he came out. Why is it if he's a liar? It could be maybe a person who's not a liar. He heard from somebody and he thought it was true. If he's a liar and he spoke out of envy, spoke out of to show off, O oh Lord, for a supplication, Atil Umrah. Make him have a long lifespan. You think, oh, that's a good supplication. Life, long lifespan. You would have asked him, may Allah kill him straight away. He said, no, give him a long lifespan. And make him poor. So long life. That's with what? Pain, poverty. Third one, وَعَرِّضُهُ fitan, And expose him to the fitan. He did not say which fitan. Fitan means tribulation. The man, according to the narrative of the hadith, he gone so old. This is Sahih Bukhari. He gone so old. Until his eyebrows went to his eyes. You know, so old. You know, the eyebrows start falling into the eyes. And he was so poor. And imagine an old man, he's after the woman, Stuck in them on the backside. Imagine an old man going to look at the backside of the woman. What's wrong with you, old man? He said, Well, the supplication of Sa'ad got me. The supplication of Sa'ad got me. So this is the supplication of somebody who's mazloom. Because he made a lie against him. All of it allegations, lies against lie. Oh Lord, if he lied against me, oh Lord, if he had said that out of uh, sort of. Uh, uh, he said it because if you want to show off, oh Lord, I'm going to call upon him three supplications. All of them have been fulfilled. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was prostrating in the Kaaba, that's in the first phase, Muslims are under persecution, very weak. While he was prostrating, the people of Quraysh, Abu Jahl, and Utbah, and Uqbah, and Walid, and Rabi'ah, 
all of those, they were laughing their head off. They were just, hey, 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 hey. Not only that, they said, one of you, go and put this placenta of the camel on top of his back. You know the camels, they used to slaughter them next to the camel. And what comes out, the placenta, you know, the blood and the guts and the intestines and all of that. One called Uqbah ibn Abi Mu'ayt. He took that placenta and put it on the top of the back of the Prophet of Allah was prostrated. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is the narrator of the hadith. He says, by Allah, he was, a, he, was a, he was himself a shepherd. I didn't have any power to help the Prophet of Allah. Prophet of Allah, he couldn't lift up his head. And the people are bullying him. Those are <laughs> laughing in the head of because of what happened to the Prophet of Allah. Somebody went to Fatima and she was a little girl. Very young. Seven, eight years old, ten years old. That's it. He told her what happened to her father. I think you need to do, yes, a bit of more dance. Yeah. <laughs> so, for verily, Fatima, she came. And she started lifting the placenta from the Prophet's back. And then she insulted them because she was a little girl. They didn't do anything to her. And when the Prophet of Allah got up from prostration. Now he's a prophet. And he's under what? Oppression. He made a supplication. O oh Lord, alayka bi Quraysh. Those Quraysh punished them. And then he named those seven or six people. He named them. When he said the supplication, all of this laugh went quiet. They were scared. They know that this money being does supplicate, it will be what? Fulfilled. Alayka bi Abi Jahl. Wa alayka bi Uqba. وعليك بربيعة وعليك في شيبة وعليك بوليد بن عتبة وعليك بأمي بن خلف he mentioned six people Abdullah ibn Zubay said by Allah I have seen all of those seven be mentioned killed on the day of Batr and thrown into the well of Qalib they were killed all of them Umayy ibn Khalaf and Abu Jahl and Utbah and, and, and Rabi'ah and Al-Walid ibn Utbah all of them they were killed because of the supplication of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he was oppressed. One person who was a Christian and he embraced Islam. Allahu A'lam was this Islam was truthful or not. And he started, he was an ascribe and he wrote two surahs for the Prophet Allah from the Wahy. Al-Baqarah and Ali Imran. And then he went back to Christianity. And he went to his people and he said, Muhammad doesn't know anything except for what I have written for him. Muhammad doesn't know anything except for what I have written for him. Prophet of Allah, he made a supplication against him. Allahumma arini fihi ayah. Oh Lord, show me a sign in him. This person died straight away. They buried him. As soon as they buried him, he was on top of the earth. They said Muhammad and his followers, they dug him out because they don't like him. They buried him and they made him deeper. He was on top of the ground the second day. They said the same thing, Muhammad and his people, they buried him deeper and deeper. And they were there and they watching him. And he, the earth just pulled him out, pushed him out. So they couldn't do anything about him except to put him on the ground and put him between stones and put more stones on top of him. That's the supplication of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. And this hadith is in Sahih al-Bukhari al-Muslim. Urwah ibn Zubay narrates a hadith for us as well. Regarding the oppression. This is from Arwah bin Uwais. She had claimed that Sayyid ibn Zayd is one of the ten companions being given glad tidings of paradise. Sayyid ibn Zayd is one of the ten companions of being given glad tidings of paradise. Arwah bin Tuwai, she claimed that this person, Sayyid, he had took something out of her land. So she went to Marwan al-Hakam when he was the leader. And she said, Sayyid ibn Zayd, he'd done so and so. So he brought Sayyid ibn Zayd. Did you do that? He said, Wallahi, I will not take an inch from that land after I heard what the Prophet of Allah said regarding this. He said, what did the Prophet of Allah said? He said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man akhada shibran min ard. You are taking a handspan. You know handspan? This handspan. From an earth without a due right, tawwakahu Allahu yawm al-qiyamati bi ardin 
بسبعين أرض or إلى سبع أرضين الله عز وجل will circle him on the day of resurrection to the seventh earth الله أكبر so Marad al-Hakim I'm not going to ask you for any proof as soon as you have just said to me this hadith I don't think he will do injustice to anybody because of the immense and the powerful punishment of somebody who does wrong something but then he said verily <coughs> because she had claimed that I'm asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's oppression O oh Lord for verily make her to live and be blind and to be killed in her own land in the narrative of the hadith he said Arwa bin to Uwais she got old and she's to be blind and she's to say I've been struck by the da'wah of Sayyid Abu Zayd while she was going on her land there was a hole she didn't say it she dropped down into it and she died supplication was fulfilled to the latter and I'm saying to the brothers it's very important that's why I just shed lots of lights upon this because all the prophets who have been wronged like Prophet Nuh alayhi salam he called upon Allah Azza wa Jal to destroy the people what happened to them? been destroyed Lut alayhi salam Sodom, Sodom and Tamara. You remember? He got, they have made zulm upon him. He called upon Allah. Allah destroyed all of them. So when you make zulm, that's what happens. And Allah will save you. Sarah, the wife of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he went to one of the villages, there was a king there. That king was a tyrant. They told him, oh, Ibrahim, he's got a nice woman with him. So he said, to her, say to the king that you are my sister. For verily there is no believer on top of the earth except for me and you. That means you are my sister in religion. So the king brings her before him. So she makes wudu. And she supplicates to Allah. He said, O oh Lord, I have made my private part only lawful to my husband. O oh Lord, keep this tyrant leader from me, away from me. O oh Lord, keep him away from me. I don't want to give him anything. So as soon as she said these words, the king, when he approached her, he fell on the ground. So she made a supplication, Oh Lord, if he's to be killed, they will say, I killed him. Oh Lord, give him life. <laughs> so he went back again. He wanted to approach her again. She made a supplication again. He fell. She made a supplication again. He got up. So he sent her back. And he said, you have given me not a human being, it's a jinn. <laughs> so every time I approach her, I get full. So send her back. And he given with her whom? Hajar. This is the story of Hajar. Hajar who was a slave of, who was a slave of Khadim, whom Ibrahim alayhi salam, who would make a marital intercourse with her and she would produce Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam from Ismail. Ismail is the father of Muhammad sallallahu great great grandfather. So that comes from this story, this oppression. So don't oppress anybody. We're coming back now to the second supplication, that is the Dawatul Musafir, supplication of the traveler. The traveler, you see, what links the three, the Madloom, the one who was under oppression, and the one who was a traveler, and the third one, which is what? The supplication of a father against his son. There's another narration which is the, fa- the two parents against their children. Those three are linked by the following. That those things are, those three, their heart are soft because of what happened to them. So when they supplicate, Allah will fulfill the supplication. The person who is madloom, his, his heart is, you know, being broken. And as for the person who is musafir, he left his country, he left his people, he left his family, he's musafir. So his heart as well tender. And as for the person who is a walid or a father or mother, whom their son, waliyadu billah, did something to them, whether it's good or bad, their heart is tender, that is why they will feel as well there. So if you did something bad to them, if you made them cry, their supplication will be fulfilled. So if you have made wrong to your father, he will be fulfilled this supplication from two angles, being a father, have been oppressed. So this person was musafir. His supplication is fulfilled. But your suffer has to be halal. Not a suffer to go and drink alcohol to womenize. A suffer that you want to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala please from you. A suffer which is made from halal money. 
Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, الرجل يطول السفر. The man is making a lot of long journey. أشعف, أغبر. He's got face was covered with dust. And uncombed hair. يمد يديه إلى السماء. He's stretching his hand to the heavens. يا رب, O Lord, give me. ومطعمه حرام. وملبسه حرام. ومشربه حرام. His food is حرام. His drink is حرام. His clothes is حرام. وغذي بالحرام. He's been fed حرام. فأنا يستجاب له. How can Allah respond to him? How can Allah respond to him? So you have to have halal in order Allah Azza wa to respond to you. So if, if your dua is not being answered, look into your source of income. Halal or not? If it's halal, alhamdulillah, then Allah Azza will fulfill your supplication. But if it is not, don't expect that Allah Azza wa Jalla will going to fulfill your supplication. Because your source of income is haram. You're eating suhd. Third one, da'wat al-warid wal the mother or the father supplicated for or against because the most greatest obligation and rights upon you after the rights of Allah is the rights of your parents. After Allah, straight away comes the parents. So Allah Azza wa Jal in all the verses, in most of the verses, when he talks about Ubudullah, he said, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا To be good to whom? To your parents. After Allah Azza wa Jalla you worship, to be good to your parents. And this I will explain it, you remember? وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ You explained that before. Did we explain it or not? We did, yes. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَوْ أحدهما أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما. So Allah Azza wa Jalla said, if they get old, both of them or one of them old, then don't tell them off. Yes. What is tell them off? Uff, uff. That's a word. Understand, as understandable in all languages. That means you don't really like what you've been asked to do. Mujahid. The interpreter of the Quran, who is a student of Abdullah ibn Abbas, who recited the interpretation of the Quran 20 times in front of Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, Don't say off, meaning that when they get old and they excrete on themselves because they can't go to the toilet, you're supposed to take that poo of theirs and don't say off. Do you understand that? Because your mother, when you were young, she used to take your poo and she said, it Smells like honey. <laughs> Do not, she never said oof to her child. She might say oof to other child. But her own smells perfume for her. Subhanallah. So after she gets old, and she'll be looking after you, say, I can't approach it. What a son you are. What a daughter you are. That is why don't say oof. And say to them good words. What is qawlan karima? One of the salaf was asked, what is qawl and karima, good words? That means you say to them, like the person who is the slave saying to his master when he's done something wrong. When you are a slave saying to your master and you've done something, what do you do? Oh, please forgive me. That's qawl and karima. So that you could go, please, oh dad, what do you want from me? Like this. You're talking to a master and you're doing something wrong. That is qawl and karima. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَ جَنَاحَ الذُّلْ And lower the wing of dhul. You know the bird has got two wings. And the wings are symbol for what? For pride. Going up. You have to lower that wing. To whom? To your parents. Don't raise your voice. Don't utter it except for what? Anything. Even if he's wrong. 100%. Even if he oppressed you. Don't you say anything to your parents. Except for what? Which is good. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He hears his mother insulting the Prophet She's a Christian. What does he say to her? Get lost? A'udhu billah. How dare you to say something against the Prophet? A'udhu billah. He was crying. Because he's insulting the Prophet of Allah. But he never said anything bad to her. And that resulted later on for her to embrace Islam. When she sees her son after insulting what he believes in, yet he's still patient. Must be good religion this.
he called upon Allah. That's number one. Number two, he made her priest preaching, calling her to the deen, even though she insulted. Number three, he went to the Prophet. Messenger of Allah, dua from the mother. It's like this is the last shot. Prophet of Allah made the dua. And Allah willed for her to embrace Islam. As soon as he made the dua, he went back with the intention, maybe, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, will put iman. But he would never think it's going to be that soon, that fast. So he came to the house and the door was closed. And he heard khat khata, shh, mayyid, water, pani, huh? Call it pani? Pani. Pani. <laughs> water, shh. She said, don't enter, Abu Hurairah. Wait. Then she dressed up, she opened the door. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. And what happened to Abu Hurairah now? Jumping up and down, mother! Embrace Islam. After all of that time, she giving him a headache. Now he embraces Islam. Jumps up and down, and the first person who's going to give Latin tiny to him is whom? Prophet Muhammad. Oh, Prophet, my mother. She embraces Islam. She embraces Islam. Messenger of Allah. Now he's greedy. Make dua for us, Messenger of Allah. Me, my mother, to be the most beloved people to the believers. And to be the believers, to make the believers the most beloved to our hearts. Oh, Lord. Make Abu Hurairah, Prophet Samson, and the mother of Abu Hurairah, to be the most beloved people to the hearts of the believers. And make the believers the most beloved people to the hearts of Abu Hurairah and Abu Hurairah. Abu Hurairah, you know what he says? Ma khuliqa bashar. And another narration, not a Christian or a Jew. That there is not a created a human being, or the creation. And he said, even the Christian and the Jews, once they hear about Abu Hurairah, and the mother of Abu Hurairah, they love Abu Hurairah and his mother. So if you heard about Abu Hurairah and the story of Abu Hurairah and how good he was Abu Hurairah and how good the mother of Abu Hurairah, and you have no wal'iyadu billah, the rafidah they have in their hearts, you will love Abu Hurairah. As for the rafidah, a'udhu billah. Christian and Jews will love Abu Hurairah. But the rafidah, they hate Abu Hurairah. Atheists will love Abu Hurairah. And the mother of Abu Hurairah. A man who was a skin, very thin guy. He was hungry all the time. So that is for you, the parents. You need to be all. So if you have a parents who are not Muslim, don't you ever say, oh, they're too old to understand. I don't think. No, yeah, okay, don't give up. Don't give up. You want your father to die or your mother to die and, and you'll be hitting yourself all day. Why didn't I just tell them about the deen? Imagine, you can imagine your father and your mother going to be what? In the hellfire. How dare you, Yeh? 24 hours. If you can't, go and send people. Don't give up. Abu Hurairah never given up, Yeh. Never given up. She was insulting the Prophet of Allah and he never given up. And that's it. Abu Hurairah becomes not just a believer, she's a companion. Radiallahu anha. May Allah be pleased with her, we say. Companion. She was a Christian, Yeh. So as, a, as a, some of the brothers whom I know that they have reverse and I ask them about their parents, he's too old, she's too old, my mother to understand. No, 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 don't say that. Wallahi, some people, which we know, not just embrace Islam when they're old. Somebody had memorized the Quran as a lady when she is 87 years old. Not sure as not the whole of the Quran. I've got it on video here. An old woman, she had memorized the Quran in six years, fully. She was not a person who can't even just memorize. She can't even read properly. She learned it. She's an old grandma. Shame on us. She memorized it, mashallah. So how about that? Your father, your brother, don't say you're too old, you can't understand. One word. You don't know the key for their heart and they embrace Islam. You know that some of the brothers whom I know, I know myself, they embrace Islam the last moments. One of them, you've seen him on video, the father of Abdul Rahim Green. I know the family of his. The father of Abdul Rahim Green is in the last moment of his deathbed. La ilaha illallah. Subhanallah, la ilaha illallah. Another person whom I know, his mother, she used to be not just hating Islam, she used to be a racist. <laughs> When she sees me, she hates me. She hates the skin of mine. 
And she hates, and she's married to Pakistan. She hates. And once her son told me that she embraced Islam, I said, I couldn't believe it. But it's not her son who made her to become a Muslim. Maybe had given up on her. Yeah, she's a racist. It's the grandson who comes to her and he's really sad and she's really now in the last days of hers. Because she, and he's always miserable like that grandson. What's wrong with you, my grandchild? She loves him. He says, because I don't want him to go to hellfire. And he's only 12, 12, 13 years old. I don't want him to go to hellfire. That's why I'm upset. She said, okay, what do we need to do to become a Muslim? This is after what? Years. You never heard about these words. Years. There was a kafir. What, what, what should I say? He told her the shahada of a little boy. And she embraced the shahada. And look at the sun now jumping up and down. My mother embraced Islam after she being a racist. And she died just about a week after that. A week of Islam. Huh? A week. A week of Islam. Wallahi, people embrace Islam the last moment and then they die. We know about that for sure. Usayrim ibn Abdul Ashhal. Usayrim is a person who is from the Ansar, whom when Mus'ab ibn Umayr and Usayr ibn Hudayr, they were giving the da'wah in Medina. All the Khazraj, all the Aus embraced Islam except for one, for Usayrim. He was found in the battle. And he was fighting and he died. Just before he died, his people came, why are you out? Are you with the enemies or with us? They don't know. He said, no, I believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi I am a Muslim. He believed even after the, after the shahada. Because he doesn't know the shahada yet. I am a Muslim. And then he died. They told the Prophet of Allah, said, the Prophet of Allah, he said, he's in Jannah. Khalas, he's been told. By Allah the Almighty, he's in Jannah. How many hours he's been Muslim? God knows, maybe half an hour, an hour, two hours. He saw the people running for the, uh, for the battle. He came with them. Allah gave him the... Just an hour of deen and mashallah. Lots, lots of people I know that last moments of theirs, they embrace Islam and they what? <coughs> they die. Alhamdulillah. Your tawbah will not be accepted if you have gargara. Just like the gargara of whom? Fir'aun. Fir'aun, the last moment is oh, dying in the sea. Amen to he didn't even say, I, I believe in God. So I believe in the one whom Banu Israel believe in. Do you understand that? The one whom Banu Israel believe in, I believe in it. He didn't say God. You know? And Jibreel said to the Prophet of Allah, you should have seen me, you know, when I was putting sand and water in the mouth of Fir'aun not to utter the shahada in case the rahmah, the mercy of Allah, would get him. He doesn't want him to, because he's been, I will but of course, even if he said these words, they are in the what? Gargara. They will not be accepted. You are dying. You are seeing the death. You are seeing the angel of death. No, that's it. He will not help you. So he is in the qar, nahri jahannam. He is in the bottom of the hell. After this, we say to the brothers, make sure that you are good to your parents. And I have to, inshallah, stop here. And I know that we have, oh, by the way, 482 is unauthentic. So we talk inshallah 483, by the way, this is in 470, we explain it, it's only about uh, two weeks ago, yes, 470, but it just says, اتقوا الظلم فإن الظلم ظلمات يومات, so this is the addition of it, fear the ظلم, oppression, for very oppression will turn into darkness on the day of resurrection, but we will explain inshallah more next time. Okay, you have any questions please? <coughs> Obviously, um, maybe you was in jail or you've forgotten the one that you've oppressed. What is the best way to rectify that? If you were in Jahili, you forgot the one who, who, whom you oppressed. You don't know which one? Yeah, you don't know who you oppressed. If you forgot the one whom you oppressed, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like will help the person who is in debt, and yet he was not able to settle his debt because the debt it will turn into hasanat and sayyid, the resurrection. Allah will pay on your behalf. Also, for this, Allah will defend on you on the day of resurrection. <coughs> so the person was in debt, and he was striving to settle the debt, but he died, he couldn't settle it. His, pair, his uh, children could not settle it. His family couldn't settle it. On the day of resurrection, that man, he wants his money, but he will be hasanat. Allah will pay on your behalf. Whatever he asks, he will give on your behalf, 
And you'll be saying the same thing with the person who done injustice to somebody that he doesn't know where is that person. If he knows it but he don't know where he to get him and he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness, then Allah azza wa jal inshallah will protect him if he wills. Naam. Fadal. What, what is uh, gargara? Gargara from gar 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 gar. That's the word. So Arabic gar gar means gar 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 gar. When the person is just the throat as its exit. You know the throat as its exit? It becomes like a rattling. That's the word. Rattling sound. Okay? That's the gar gar. So that is the zero hour. A person who is going to die. That's it. Die. It's not a person who's being diagnosed by cancer and the doctor, they said, you've got only two hours or two days to live. No, this person is able to repent to Allah. Prophet of Allah, he came to the Jewish boy and he was in the, uh, in the hadith, it says, in his death bed. That means the bed that would witness his death. That means he died on that bed. In his death bed, the last moments. And the Prophet of Allah, he came to visit him. He did not visit him to say to him, you're about to die, bye-bye. No, you don't say that to the person like that. He came to him to tell him, <coughs> give him, what's, first of all, the visit that which is beneficial to the person himself. He who does a visit to the person who is ill, 70,000 angels, if he did that visit in the morning, will invoke forgiveness on your behalf. If you do it in the evening, 70,000 angels will invoke forgiveness until the following morning. So, if you go in the morning, 70,000 angels, will give forgiveness, invoke forgiveness on your behalf until the evening. If you did in the evening, 70,000 angels will invoke forgiveness to you until the morning. So he came to the Jewish boy and he said to him, embrace Islam. Because it's the most important thing. <coughs> now he doesn't know that the Prophet is going to depart now. He's going to embrace Islam. So the boy has got the power to talk, the power to look. So he's a boy. And you, boy means you expect for him to live what? Long. For very the Prophet of Allah Wasallam, one day he said to Umaymah, you know Umaymah, which is his granddaughter from Zainab. So, so she, she, she sent to him, to the Prophet of Allah, Messenger of Allah, come for Umaymah. She was in her last moments. So when the Messenger of the of hers came to the Prophet, Prophet of Allah, he said, Inna lillahi ma akhad, wa lillahi ma a'ta, wa kulla shayin indahu ila ajalim musamma. For Allah belongs what he takes, and to him what he gives, and everything is timed. He said these words, even Umayyam is still what? Alive. But when the messenger came back to his daughter, she said, No, I want the Prophet to go and tell him, A'ziman, I want him to come. So the Prophet of Allah came, and he saw Umayyam. And he was crying. And another could just say, you do that, Messenger of Allah? He said, this is a mercy. Now that Umayma lived to see her mother's death, to see the Prophet Sallallahu death. So she lived. It was, like, it was like she was passing her last breath, but it wasn't. As for that Jewish boy, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Islam, he looked at his father. His father is Jewish. It's like saying, shall I? Take him permission from his father. So the father, he knows where the haq is. He said, Ata Abu Qasim. This is the kunya that the Jews give to the Prophet. Abu Qasim. They don't call him Abu Qasim. Fulfill the command of Abu Qasim. Now that Jewish man, he did very well to his son because he made him to be the servant of the Prophet. How many Jews would give their sons to be a servant to a Muslim family? Not many, maybe impossible. Yes. So he went, you see, it reminds me of a person who smokes cigarettes and he knows that cigarettes is haram. And you know cigarettes is no good for the pocket, for the chest. He would smoke it, but he will never tolerate that his son or his daughter will smoke it. True or not? Same thing with the Jewish man. And he knows he's upon the bottle, but his pride prevents him from becoming a Muslim. But he doesn't want his son to be in the fire. So he said to him, Obey Abu Qasim. Because he knows it's a haq. So he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna ka rasulullah. Now the Prophet is not sitting in shahada. He knows the shahada before he learned it, the boy. He said to him, embrace Islam. As soon as he got the green light from his father, he uttered the shahada. Straight away after that, he dies. Prophet of Allah, he said, Sallu ala akhikum. He screamed, Your brother, offer the prayer on him. Take away that man. The Jewish man is not from him. Take away from him. 
So they offered the prayer only. Look, there was Jews, very few, who had embraced Islam at the time of the Prophet One of them are rabbis, like Abdullah ibn Salam, like Ka'b ibn Mata' at the time of Umar Khattab embraced Islam. The Jews embraced Islam, but very few. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم جزاكم الله خيرا